Hello again, everyone. It's good to have you with us for this event. It figures to be an exceptional one, one that doesn't need any buildup. So, Ralph is going to take us starting in 1933 through 51. Uh, what do you got, dude? Did one these minute. guys win one? Yeah. We won one. And, you have uh, 10 pages on that team when they won? <laughs> <laughs> in 1933, uh, the championship game was basically uh, the Chicago Bears versus the New York Giants. And is that their second win? Yeah. Because you had only yeah, one. Yeah, they had one. All right. And the final score was 23-21, which was pretty it's high scoring. Played, time. played yeah, in Wrigley Field, a high scoring game. Yeah, it was. It was, it was on December being 17th. In the stands for that, like that would be the greatest thing to watch. If I built a time machine, yeah. I'd want to go to this game. I want to go to that stadium to this day. Yeah. You're I, right though. It was played at, at Wrigley Field and there was uh, 26,000 fans in attendance. Uh, that would be awesome. The record, Chicago's record for the season was 10-2 and 1. They, uh, Chicago's defense, which they were really known for throughout basically their whole... Almost always, right? Yeah, always. Their defense was pretty fucking disgusting. They would stop everybody. They only allowed 33 points in the, in the first six games. It's like less than a touchdown a game. Yeah. Uh, their head coach was the end general manager was uh, George Hollis. Uh, would you, Papa you call Bear. Him Papa Bear. Which this guy, even though the Bears are... One of the rivals of the Lions, and I'm a Lions fan, obviously. But this guy, you got to give this guy props. Hey, he was a hell of a player. This guy was a badass. He was a hell of a player. Not he, only a player, but as he a was coach, as a GM, a coach, GM, owner. owner, and the guy fought in both world wars. Oh wow, interesting. He was a, he was a captain in the Navy. That guy is super interesting. Was he the coach? And in he that killed one? more people. Yes, than he was a coach player pops. in the in the first one. Oh wow. When in in an interesting fact about about Hallis is that in 1921 he picked up a fumble 98 yards. It was an NFL record up until 1972. Nice. Little tidbit there for you. Was he like a DB or He was like a yeah, he was a DB. Yeah, but, man, uh, legendary character. He was. And uh also the Bears were at home. They're, they were they never lost field. a game. They were seven and zero. Oh, so on the road they were three two and one. Uh, they were first in their division. Uh, the only road losses they had was uh, to Boston, which were the the Redskins back then, the Boston Redskins, and to New York, which was the uh, the Giants, which they played in this championship game. And they ended up in a tie with a new franchise, which was the Philadelphia Eagles, which was a new franchise that had just... Uh... They were called that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, they won their last four regular season games, uh, including two against Portsmouth Spartans, which later became the Lions. And they had a, actually they had a, a high-octane passing attack for that era. They uh they they average a lot more passing yards than pretty much every other team in the league, and they had the best kicking game in the league. Uh, let's see what else I got here. Their O line was highly improved with the addition of uh, George the Moose Musso, which weighed <laughs> over which over which weighed over two hundred and sixty pounds. You got to remember, at this time, 1933, it was during the Great Depression. So if you weighed 260 pounds, that was a fucking blessing from the gods. <laughs> You're eating a lot of potatoes, bro. And, uh... a lot. You're eating something. Does anybody uh, know when we start calling it the National Football League? 1922. Okay. In your... Was that your... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... First two years was the... Gotcha. Second year in. Okay. Also, the, uh, the team was pretty stacked. They had uh, six future Hall of Famers. They had uh, Red Grange, halfback, Billy Hewitt, which was end, which was pretty much a wide, what a wide receiver is now. 
Uh, why do they call them flankers and split ends, and now they're wide receivers? That was the 1920s uh, and 30s. That's just a change of yeah. terminology. I mean, there used to be a flanker, a split right. end. Uh, now it's just like a wide receiver. We say slot sometimes. Well, it's, it depends on their position on the field, right? If they're flanking, when they're on the far end, if they're a split end, they're right, right off. Well, the off thing the is line, that the right? ends, the ends were. Would line up pretty much with a tight end. Right, off the line. Yeah. It was a split end, and a flanker was flanking on the side. Right, well, they didn't even just... use flankers back then. So a split end is like a tight end? Yeah, pretty and much. And a flanker is like a wide receiver? So every Correct. team has like, a change of terminology. Every team has Isn't like it better two... now, though? I kind of like yeah. flanker, yeah. dude. Yeah. I want to say, it's old school. that guy's a flanker right there, dude. I don't know, it reminds me of steak. <laughs> a flank? Flank? <laughs> flank steak, yeah. Split end I don't like so much, but I really like yeah, flanker. Yeah, split end sounds like hair yeah. shit. Anyways, those are, I'm, I'm splitting ends here. Go ahead. But anyways, it had six future Hall of Famers. Red Grange at halfback. Billy Hewitt at end. Or receiver, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Link Lamont, which was on other end. Uh, was he in Sanford and Son? <laughs> no. Bronco Nagarski. Oh, now we're talking. What a character. fullback. Legendary was also character. Legendary character. Also became a, a pro wrestler for some time. Uh, George Trafton, the center. Uh, pretty much the championship game. Uh, the Bears. It was a field goals, a lot of field goals. Uh, in the second half, it went back and forth, and with less less than three minutes left, listen to this. Less than three minutes left, Bronco Nagurski, which was fullback, throws a pass to Bill Hewitt, who lateraled. Back wow. to Bill Carr and scampered in for 36 yards to seal the deal for the Bears. Wow. Fancy, uh, Imagine fancy that. The hook and ladder. Right now, now, the fullback back in the day was like an important position. That guy was like like your big-ass running back that right. blocked and ran. and Like Jim Brown was a fullback. There was, an, right. there was, there was such a premium on running the football back then. Now we don't. Think about running so the football. Most teams that don't way. even have one, dude. But it's what, all passing game. What today. killed me about this when I when I actually looked it up? Think about it. In a championship game, who the hell nowadays would call a halfback toss and pass when the game on the line <laughs> and then do a fucking lateral at the end? You know that shit will never happen nowadays. Well, you had know? you had a, in Pittsburgh the the wide receiver threw a pass in the Super Bowl a few years ago. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Well, the Eagles did some throw. Crazy oh, yeah, the crazy. Yeah. Uh, what was the name of the play? They called it um, Philly Special or something. Yeah, yeah, special. the Philly Special. Where they threw like falls. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the best they made part a of that statue. It was against the Patriots. And the best part of even it, even better, the part, that the Patriots part. tried to do that early on in the game, and Tom, ah, he dropped oh, it. Oh my god. And that was perfectly thrown in his hand. My life doesn't revolve around hating the Patriots. Yeah, it does. Just a little bit. That's well, a I good episode. Much, to watch that episode. Well, that pretty much sums it up for 33. All right, cool. Uh, 34, you got the Giants versus the Bears. Is Not that Bears. a Bears. rematch, right? Again, rematch. No, the first one was... Uh, yeah, it was a rematch. My bad. But this time, it, it's flip-flopped. This time, the Giants get their revenge on the Bears. Is that their first? Uh, no, second. Because you had one second. in the second. Yeah, okay. yeah. The final score was 30 to 13. High so scoring they, game, man. Yeah, well, they laid a little shellacking on the Bears. Uh, this was this it was played on December 9th. Uh, the game was also known as the sneaker game. Not, Why? Uh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get into that. Uh, the Giants' head coach was uh, Steve Owen, and the stadium was in the Polo Grounds in New York. Legendary place. The Polo Grounds. Uh, the the record, the, and, uh, the record was eight and five. Giants, Giants. Okay. The record was eight and five. The Giants' record. Have you guys wait, seen wait, the Polo Grounds? Five? I'm yeah, sorry, I'm, five. I'm stuck on the Polo Grounds. Can you show the Polo Grounds when we do that? Yeah. It's a fucking weird ass because they play polo there. That's why it's the polo. It's like right. a like a horseshoe weird looking it's place. It's cavernous. Dude. It's uh, the center field was four. 54? I think more, dude, but down the lines it was so short. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. Anyways, I'm sorry. Fucking, all. I love that place. That's why. Go ahead. It's okay. Polo rounds. Awesome. <laughs> well, they were 8 and 5, and they started the season 0 and 2, losing to the Lions and the Packers. Uh, they also lost to the Bears uh, very convincingly uh, 27 to 7. So, going into the game, obviously, people thought they were the underdog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Bears were going to fucking shellac them. Did they have lines back then? 
Yeah, the lines, the lines. No, no, I mean lines, like betting lines. Oh, betting lines? I'm sure they do. In my but... era, they do. That starts in 52, mm-hmm. but I don't know how far back that goes. I mean, in this era, you know, you, so you got, yep. like, organized crime already. So, like, Yeah, you got to have betting lines. But yeah. the, the point spread, I'm going to look that up. Go ahead, keep going. When the uh, point spread was uh, invented, because we had betting, but point spread is what really made it. Right, 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 right. The Giants were led by uh, Elmer Kenneth Strong. Elmer. Which was a halfback and fullback. Another dude named Elmer. Remember last week's uh, last show's yeah. Elmer, the guy who got Elmer Fudd. <laughs> he was a halfback and fullback who also played minor league baseball. So he was like the uh, the Bo Jackson of uh, nineteen thirty four. Do you guys think Elmer that would be a good idea strong to have a show around two sport athletes? There's I'm plenty. asking you, and I'm asking them. There's plenty to pick from. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, was, yeah. it was common in this era. One yeah. of my guys in my era, Otto Graham, was a freaking basketball player too. That won a championship. Yeah, a lot of these guys played baseball. They were in the military. They did all kind of shit, and they had like full time jobs, which was crazy. Uh, inducted in the College Football Hall of Fame in 1957 and Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1967, uh, they also had uh, Malcolm John. Mm-hmm. Franklin, who uh, who played end and later became a coach. Uh, Ed Donowski, who played quarterback and halfback. Well, he played quarterback, and then there's a halfback named uh, John Joseph uh, Bo Molenda, which Bo was Molenda. a halfback and a fullback, and later became a coach. The uh, whole week leading to the... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Just 1940s invention yep. of the point, point spread. spread. Okay. The whole week leading to the championship game, uh, the weather had been horrible. Uh, there was projected about 55,000 people to attend the championship game, which would have been a record for the time. That's pretty good. Only 35,000 showed up. That's still pretty good. Because the weather was terrible. That's amazing. Uh, the Bears were 13-0. and 0. And working on a perfect season. Oh, thank God. And we're on an 18-game winning streak, which is fucking ridiculous. Uh, Dating back to the Super Bowl. The reason they called it the sneaker game, listen to this, this is pretty cool. Steve Owen, which was the owner of the, uh, was it the owner? The coach, I think you said he was. Yeah, the coach of of the Giants. Sent Abe Cohen, which was a friend of his and also like an assistant coach, to uh, to go to the town to like a local college and pick up nine pairs of basketball sneakers. I know this story a little bit because of the cold uh, field conditions. Right, because there yeah. everybody was slipping and sliding everywhere. So in the third quarter, everybody strapped on the sneakers and... The, that, the the rest is pretty much history. They man. got traction, right? That's basically right. the other guys are slipping and so they the got the Giants traction. outscored the Bears uh twenty seven to zero with four unanswered touchdowns to beat the defending champs. After the game there was various interviews from both sides and it was brought to light about the change in footwear and it was Named the sne- it was stamped the sneaker. I gotta tell game. you, man, in football, I think more than any other sport, that coach means so much. That that's a coach that said, "Go right. get those sneakers." That they don't do that, they might not win that game. You know, the coach is so important. He's like playing chess, and he's just putting little pieces here and there. And, and in football, I think more like baseball. I think baseball, like whatever, dude. Like the flip of a coin. Like I could, I could sit there and I could be like, "Yeah, all right, okay, uh, pitchers up, reliever, I uh, pinch hitter." You know, lefties pitching, put it right. You know, like almost any fan. Football, no. Like, we're fans. I don't think we could go freaking run a football team Do a right double now. switch. Yeah, base, do a double switch. You know, we could do all that. You watch a little baseball, you know, you could do it. Football, no, dude. You're not You're not going to scheme. You're not yeah. going to, you know. But baseball, yeah, lefty, put the righty. Righty, put the lefty. Uh, yeah, 100 pitches, he's got to come out. On, you know. That's yeah. the coach won that game, you know. True. So that's pretty much it for 1934. So that was... That was pretty much stamped in history as the sneaker game, that championship game. I got a little smidget here, 1934. Go ahead. We got uh, one of the – this is not one of the major ones because the major AFL incarnations, they kind of, in the research that I did, they numeralized them, AFL 1, AFL 2, AFL 3. But this was like a small AFL. They had 
it was it was mostly like a regional in the American South. So it's a 1934 same time AFL. Uh, only lasted for one season. Uh, I I did really like the name of this team, the Louis, Louisville Bourbons. I'd love to get that jersey. And they uh, some of the players' names: Popeye Wager, which is a fucking <laughs> great. Awesome. Tony Casca was a tailback. Um, and one of the problems that this league had that like some of these uh, kind of competitors to the NFL tried to do is they ended up having one very dominating team that uh, theirs was the KC Blues. St. Louis slash KC Blues. I don't know how they're in two cities in only one season. Maybe they got moved. Uh, but they ended up like dominating. So they were like the only team, the only draw. The other teams just nobody wanted to see them. So they end up dominating them a lot of the other teams they didn't really assemble their teams the following season they ended up 7-0-1 um and um you know even today we still have leagues people are still trying to come up uh and compete with the nfl with uh you got the xfl we were talking about that on the phone earlier they're coming up uh soon right with their 20, uh 21 no 2020 right next year i think right yeah. is there a thing yeah. uh, i think february 2020 which is the second incarnation of the xfl yeah because he uh, tried it like like what like 10 years ago or yeah, something, I think, right? well, i think more man i think more we're talking that? early 2000s maybe something like yeah. that um i'll check it now yeah. um man's a bitch yeah you can't own all the teams dude it's got to be an f- open market yeah. you know i think he wants to monopolize everything that's not gonna work not, he can't do with wrestling what he did with the nfl i'm cool i'm all for football more leagues i mean cool, the dude. xfl would probably be like all the rejects that got kicked out of you know from tony o'brien would be like the captain of a team or something the louisville bourbons i mean dude if you got Good name yeah i know i love that Good man name. louisville bourbons if you uh if you got think of some guy who's not who's we're getting off track and we got a lot of subjects to cover. But real quick, who would you put in in that league right now if you had to ask Kaepernick would be playing in that league, right? Probably. Antonio I think Brown. he's a... Antonio? Yeah, I think he's a top 20 quarterback. I mean, I know I'm going to catch some flack for that. I think yeah, he is. Especially down here. Yeah. Castro, Castro shirt. shirt is like a bad idea, but yeah. well, I think he's a top 20. That. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want to get into that the, yeah, yeah. too much, but... He freaking changed the venue of the thing, you know. I don't know. Yeah, dude. last. Yeah. If he doesn't get on board, it's his fault, man. I, I think. Anyways, All right. sorry, we got a lot of ground to cover. Go. Uh, 1935, the Lions actually win their first. Uh, there you go. Championship as the Detroit Lions. Here we go. Yeah, well, yeah. Portsmouth never won, right? Uh, I don't know. Did they? No. Okay. They made it to a title game and lost. Well, the Lions made it to this one and they actually won it. And I'll against. Be- the Giants. Which and look were, at the Giants, man. They're always in there, right? Yeah, the, at the, Giants, the Giants pretty much. This is your third year, and they were in there all three years, right? Yeah. That's right. The final score was 26-7. to 7. Go Lions. Honolulu Blue. And this was on the December 15th. Impartial. Impartial <laughs> journalism. The championship game was played at University of Detroit Stadium, and there was 12,000 people in attendance. Uh, their head coach was Patsy Clark. I don't think I want my coach to be named Patsy. Uh, mm. This was the first championship by the newly formed and renamed Detroit Lions. The Lions record in 1935 season was 7-3-2. and It's a lot better than what they got now. Losing to the Brooklyn Dodgers and twice to the Green Bay Packers. That's crazy. They had all these baseball teams that were also football teams. Like they had all the same the name. All over the New York Yankees, Yankees, Cleveland Indians. Yeah, it's so confusing. Uh, the Lions had a tenacious running attack. Led by Dutch Clark, also known as the Flying Dutchman. I love it. Who was the galloping? <laughs> the galloping. Oh, Red that's Grinch. Red, Ra- uh, Red, Red Green. Okay, Red we Green. Spoke, galloping we ghost. About him already. The galloping ghost. I'm the galloping the, goat. Bobby Lane was the quarterback, right? Of the Lions. In my era, I had uh, Bobby Lane. I don't know if he was. Oh, the maybe point. he's. Was yeah, he the QB he? there, right there? Do you know? No. I'll look it up. I think here. that's fifties. Yeah, definitely fifty-two. If he 50s. was in there. Who are we at? 1935? Yeah. I'll check it out. Keep going. And they had a Ernie halfback named Ernie Cadell, who led the league with 621 yards from scrimmage and a whopping 6.4 yards per touch. Yeah, but at least we know that. I mean, in my era, we don't know anything. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The Flying Dutchman's number seven jersey was retired in number seven was retired by the Lions. Uh, let's see what else I got here. Flying Dutch that's a fucking great name, dude. Uh 
Dutch Clark is the quarterback. The Flying Dutchman, right? Dutch Clark, yeah, that's what I said. Is he the Flying du- Okay, yeah, he's All the right, QB. Right. There you go. Great fucking name. Also known as the Old Master, it says here. So this guy's got like two fucking badass nicknames. This was actually a great year for the city of Detroit. Listen to this. This is crazy. I don't think this would ever happen again, but I hope so before I die. Uh, the Lions won the championship. The Tigers won the World Series. The Red Wings won the Stanley Cup. Joe Lewis, the Brown Bomber, was the heavyweight champion of the world. Eddie Midnight Express Tolan won two gold medals in the 100 and 200 meter races of the 1932 Summer Olympics. So Detroit was named the City of Champions. And, and throw in that Ford Motor Company was producing Model Ts or whatever the hell they had back then. Like hotcakes. Like so you guys were like almost like Boston at that time. <laughs> Come on, bro. I mean, like, dude. Don't do that. You know what's the saddest, <laughs> the saddest picture I've ever seen in my life? So we got Motown. They got cheese. They have some little <laughs> snot-nosed brat, like 11-year-old, at one of the parades, and he's holding up a sign. He goes, I'm 11, 16 parades, or something like that. And he's got, like, six oh, Patriot yeah, yeah. ones, like, that. four Red Sox that. ones, like a Celtic one, and I think the Bruins may have won What was the, the Red Sox was, what, 100 and... Yeah, I loved that time when they yeah. didn't win for so long. The, the Curse of the Goat, actually... Remember that? The Curse of the Goat? They wouldn't let the guy in with the... Was, oh, no, wait. Sorry. They got the Curse of the Bambino. The Curse of the Goat is oh, the that's Cubs. Oh, that's the Cubs. Yeah, they wouldn't yeah. let the guy into the stadium with his goat. Right. Off track again. Go. So, 35. That was pretty much 35. <laughs> the Lions win their I first hear a goat. I just start fucking going. He gets and it was the year the, the, the Detroit was, was named the City of Champions. That's every, impressive. Every huge, every professional sports team in every different sport... Was basically top of their game. I wonder if that's year. ever happened again. Pretty cool, man. Pretty fucking cool. All right, man. 1930. It was, it was a pleasure doing 1935. <laughs> let me tell you. I wish I lived in that, that era, but unfortunately. But uh, 1936. Oh, quick question. Was a terrible uh, quick, year. Quick thing the on Packers, 1936 huh? before. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Uh, 1936, first NFL draft. Right. Up to that point, you were bidding on college players. Right. So Everybody was like a free agent. Free agent. But now we're having a real draft starting in 1936. Big. 1936 was also a bad year because the Packers uh, won it all. <laughs> uh, You're a journalist, dude. You got to be impartial. Sorry. <laughs> sorry to you Green Bay fans. But uh, the Packers, it was the Packers and the Boston Redskins. Uh, the final score was 21-6. Packers winning it all. Fourth title for the Packers. Fourth title for Fourth the title. Packers. It was on December 13th. Uh, it was played at City Stadium, Wisconsin at State Far- Fair Park. Sounds terrible. but The sound Boston good. Redskins mm-hmm. were... Uh, actually, it was moved. The, I'm sorry. The Redskins. It was. It was going to be played at the Polo Grounds. No, it was going to be played at Boston, but due to poor support from the city, it was moved to the Polo to the Polo Grounds in New York City. To like a neutral field. To a neutral field. It was the first actual championship game played on a neutral field. Because up to that point, I think there were Go alternate. Figure, the people from Boston didn't want to support the. Uh, the the local uh, football game. They would alternate between the conferences, I think. To, right. Like, it was predetermined which conference would host the title game. So, the Redskins were supposed to host it, hmm. but due to poor support by the city, it was moved to the Polo Grounds in New York City. Make it... Oh, I'm sorry. It was making it the only... The second championship game played on neutral grounds. So, it was the actual second championship game played on neutral grounds. It wasn't the first one. Uh, Curly Lambeau was the head coach, and the attendance was about uh, roughly about twenty nine thousand fans in attendance. Uh, Curly Lambeau was a native of Green Bay. As a player, he played ten seasons. Everybody knows that. Was and he on some of those teams that won in your era? Yeah, he had. Uh, and he coached yeah, over thirty he was years. Involved in all of them, actually. He coached over thirty years. He was considered pretty much like the Bill Belichick of the era. 
He coached what are the like odds? 50s, I think. Then later, Vince Lombardi. He is... won six NFL championships. And the stadium the Packers play in today is named after him. Broken Lambeau, into... Lambeau, Lambeau in, Stadium. Broken in on 1956. So I was just looking at that. Right. He's got to uh, pain you to say all these things. Yeah, this guy's just... <laughs> You're doing good. They were led by... Uh, actually, this guy was pretty good. This quarterback was pretty badass. They were led by uh, Arnie Herber was the quarterback, uh, which he was in- inducted into the Pro Hall of Fame uh, in 1966. Also, Bob Monette, which was a halfback, he was uh, inducted into the Green Bay Hall of Fame. That's gay. They had <laughs> <laughs> they had an all-pro offensive lineman, uh, George Svensson. Which was probably Russian or some shit. And they started off the game with a 48 yard carpet bomb from Arnie Herber. Which was. What is a carpet bomb? Like a like a Hail Mary. Oh, okay. But, you know, just. I did a little reference to, like, you know. I don't know. Carpet bomb! Right. To Don Hudson, which was a split end. There you go. The I was going to say, that sounds like either a split end or a flanker to me, that name. I don't know. Uh, Boston scored in the second quarter, uh, but the Packers basically dominated the whole game to get their fourth. You know, I think Ogre mentioned the This fourth. team is today the, the Washington Redskins. Right. And I have the scoop. Well, actually, it became, you. this is the year that it happened. I was going to get to that right I'm now. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. A... Because of the whole Boston thing that the Boston wasn't supporting the, the I, I city. I have the scoop next as to why. I have more. Let's go. So, the uh, here's this guy's name mentioned for the first time, which was the Redskins owner at the time, George Preston Marshall. Remember that guy's name? He's he going to come up a lot. He was yeah. a real coos. Yeah. He's probably dead, of course, by now, but well, this guy yeah. was a real bitch. Uh, George Preston Marshall moved the team to his hometown of Washington, D.C., the following season, because of the the whole debacle with uh, no fan support in Boston. Go Is ahead. that it? For, I got a little bit. I, again, I'm going to jump in with another AFL. We got the AFL two right now. They operated from 1936 to 37. They were an NFL rival. The Cleve, Cleveland Rams came from here, which um, are later the LA Rams, later the St. Louis Rams, and now again the LA Rams. Um, in this AFL 2, we have the first undefeated team, which predated the 1948 Browns of the AAFC, right? Am I saying that right? AAFC. Mm-hmm. That's and, right. and they predated, of course, the greatest of all time. Recently voted right now. <laughs> actually, the NFL voted on the 100 greatest teams. You're aware of this, Ogre, right? I did see that. And, and who is number one? We know who number 72 one is. 72 Dolphins. 72 Dolphins. Fittingly, they should be. They're undefeated. The only undefeated NFL team. But the Browns did it in the AAFC, and the LA Bulldogs did it in this league. Um, well, how many games did they play? I'm sure they didn't play. Yeah. You know, I don't have the records. Maybe Ogre can check for From me. Team? LA Bulldogs. I'm sure in, it was a lot less in than 1936. The Dolphins did. Yeah, they may have played 14 games, maybe. Um, this was like a veteran league. There was veterans that, that were brought over, and the veterans were allowed to be part of the management of the league. was one of the interesting things. Veterana. Yeah. <laughs> um, they, they pillaged their nearby NFL cities for their rosters and coaches. So, like, you know, I don't know the cities, but, like, if there's a team in Detroit, you know, they go and they put the Detroit lug nuts or whatever, and then they start right. taking dudes off the rosters. Right. Um, the, one of the uh, powerhouse teams was the Boston Shamrocks, which actually were very popular, and it probably really influenced, well, from what I read, it influenced this guy to move his team too. Right. That's part of the reason why there was not a lot of support for them, because that was a powerhouse team, Boston Shamrocks. You got some longer? 8 and 0 They were a perfect team. Okay. But eight, eight games. Eight games. Right. Yeah, that's what gotcha. I'm saying. Um, we had a New York Yankees here yep. uh, in this league, too, which is confusing. Uh, boxer Jack Dempsey was involved. Bing Crosby, they were on the board. Uh, later, sounds, sounds like the Mafia was involved yeah. on that one. <laughs> later, the NFL gutted. A couple of Gambinos in there. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Later, the NFL ended up gutting their teams like they did initially to the NFL, which kind of led uh, to their, their downfall. Um, 
even though it was a short-lived uh, league, it introduced it kind of introduced West Coast football by putting a team out there. Um, the Redskins moved from the Boston area, which is a big thing. Um, so while brief, important things came out of it. And um, the Bengals, the original Cincinnati Bengals were on here. I didn't know that. Which then went to a, a minor league team, which then went to the third AFL team, which oh. died and were later revolved by the legendary Paul Brown. So we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but th- that kind of ties into what you were talking that era. So... Now we're in 1937. 1937. The Washington Redskins become champs. Hail to oh, the Redskins. Redskins. Is that the 73 nothing game? Uh, you told me about some no. crazy-ass game. No, this is not it. Oh, the Redskins right. no, they lost. won. They lost. They lost 73 to nothing oh, right, right. to the Bears. Yeah. But this is the actually one as now renamed the, the George Preston Marshall owner. Takes them back to D.C., and he names them the Washington Redskins. Now they win the title uh, versus the Bears. The final score was 28-21, and it was played on December 12th. Uh, it was actually played at Wrigley Field, and there was only 15,000 fans in attendance. So, dude, this is the – is this – they just moved to that city, they win. Lions moved to Detroit, they win. Isn't that kind of crazy? That happens so close. New team, yeah. new city, boom, championship. Insane. For, uh, what do they call it? A uh, breath of fresh air. Yeah, maybe they just need a change of scenery. But the head coach was uh, Roy Flaherty, and uh, their regular season record was 8-3, and three, losing to the Chicago Cardinals, Philadelphia Eagles, and Pittsburgh Pirates. Not the baseball team, the football team. Confusing stuff when they do that. Uh, the Redskins star quarterback and all-pro uh, Sammy Ball uh, from TCU. Slinging Sammy. Slinging Sammy. Sounds like a porn star. Or a swinger. <laughs> <laughs> but Slinging Sammy was also a, a college, big college fucking uh, player. He was a big deal at TCU. Uh, he was a future Hall of Famer, inducted in 63. Uh, 37 was his rookie year, and he led the league in passing, which is crazy for a rookie to lead the league in passing. That shit doesn't happen nowadays. No. Marino... Uh, Mm. He was close. I don't know. He came yeah. on late in 20, the year in his rookie. Yeah. They also had Cliff Battles, which was a halfback, three time Pro Bowler, and future Hall of Famer, yep. inducted in 68. Uh, he led the league in rushing with 874 yards. Uh, Albert Glenn, the Turk Edwards, was a tackle who fortified the Redskins' O line. He was a three time Pro Bowler and inducted into the Hall of Fame in 69. In the championship game, the weather was 24 degrees Fahrenheit, which to us Floridians is your fucking balls are going to stick to the side of your leg frozen. Yeah, I mean, each time you use the toilet, right? I mean, right now it's what, like 50 something, 58, 60? Which is balmy and we're for us. And, I'm, and we're wearing like yeah. our fur coats outside. Yeah. But uh, the wind chill factor was fucking ridiculous. It made it about negative 20 degrees, according to Ball, slinging Sammy. Uh, I'm glad they figured that out, that they can't do that anymore. They got to play in Miami and fucking domes and shit like that. Yeah. Took a while, but... Taking a page out of the uh, out of the Giants playbook with the sneaker game, they also, the whole, both teams wore basketball sneakers in this championship game. So that kind of became like a trend now with the footing. Uh, the game was back and forth between both teams. Chicago led at halftime 14-7. However, Ball lit up the sky in the second half, dropping bombs everywhere. In the fourth quarter, at, it was tied at 21-21, which is pretty cool because uh, most championship games, is not really close games, but this one was. In the fourth quarter, it was 21-21, and the final strike was Ball throwing a 35-yard pass to wing back Ed Justice, which is a pretty cool fucking name. Justice was served. It sounds like a fucking superhero. So Ed Justice sealed the deal, making it 28-21. Ball shredded the Bears' defense with 18 for 33 passing and 335 yards, which was back then was equivalent Unheard. to now throwing 700 fucking yards right now. Basically. Uh... 
A lot of people said that Ball was a pioneer and one of the first actual natural pocket passers of the league. Well, we're probably getting into like uh, some passing now. It's like that. Right. This guy's one of the uh, pioneers of that. Now moving on to 1938, the Giants, fucking Giants. Every fucking championship game, the Giants. They were, were powerhouse, dude. Yeah, they were. Giant, we got a Giants uh, helmet, you know. Yeah, so right over here. There you go. Dude, Probably. my dad wasn't even born yet. That's how crazy this is. Yeah. What you got over? You got something? No, I'm just looking at for later. A little bit of uh, for the 50s. I'm looking ahead. Oh, you're a foreseer of the future. Yeah. Like what the water. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, Walter. <laughs> so 1938. 1938, the Giants versus the Green Bay We're Packers. We're not even in World War II yet, right? Not uh, yet. That's 42. 42. Uh, this was a great year, by the way, because the Giants defeated the Packers in the championship <laughs> game. Uh, final score was 23-17. <laughs> it was played on December 11th. They played at the Polo Grounds in New York. Uh, there was 48,000 fans in attendance, Wow, which was a lot for, for those games. Uh, Steve Owen was their head coach, and their record was 8-2-1. and one. They had lost two season games to the Philadelphia Eagles and to the Pittsburgh Pirates. This is like their third championship, right? Or something yeah, like that? I think so. Right. The Giants had Alphonse Emil Tuffy Lenins, which was their fullback. Half, fullback slash halfback. That's all one guy's name. All those names. Well, Tuffy was the nickname that they called him Tuffy because I think nah, he, was, man, that's a he good, was fucking tough. That's a good name for a fullback. Which I also, my Tuffy fullback. was the little fucking little baby mouse in Tom and Jerry. Uh, I think so. A little gray one with the little diapers. I mean, if you're gonna, <laughs> Not that I want to, you know, take away from Tuffy, but but yeah, I'll just digging into that deep out. into Tom and Jerry right now. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a future Hall of Famer inducted in 1978. Uh, they also had Albert Henry uh, Sewer, which played running back and DB, and he caught the the game winning pass in in the championship game. Uh, he later had a career as a baseball umpire, which is pretty cool, hmm. which was a long career, and he was a two time Pro Bowler. Ed uh, Ed Donowalski was the quarterback of the Giants, which already had a championship under his belt in 1934. Uh, the game was, there was no favored, there was no team favored, and it was a pretty one, it was a pretty even matchup. Uh, Green Bay was without their Hall of Fame, uh, split end. Don Hudson, uh, the Giants took an early lead and had a halftime Green Bay trailing at halftime 16 to 14. In in the beginning of the third quarter, Green Bay scored a field goal and wouldn't score again after that. Despite of Green Bay's massive passing attack with uh, quarterback Arnie Herber, which was the guy I mentioned the year prior, mm -hmm. which was a great quarterback, he could not get a decent drive going, and that pretty much sealed the deal. Uh... The final, like I said, Hank Sewer caught the last 23-yard pass from uh, Donowalski to seal Green Bay's fate, 23-17. Uh, this was New York's... Uh, this was New York's championship game since the infamous sneaker game of 1934. So they won one in 34, then they won again in 38. You just did 38? Yeah. Okay. What are we drinking today, guys? Ogre brought. Today we're doing a little bit of Jim Beam Black Extra Aged Bourbon. So what does that mean, dude? It's just... is This is just extra aged. It means you aged. can start a fucking exactly car with what you, it. Huh? What, it means you can start a fucking car with that shit. It's pretty strong. It's just extra aged uh, I think it's Jim in a black Beam. barrel. It's pretty fucking good, dude. I don't know the color of the barrel, but it's pretty. pretty I'll be honest with you. When you strong. told me Jim Beam, I was like, eh. But it's pretty fucking good, dude. Yeah. It um. Uh, pour some more. Anyways, that's what we're drinking tonight. If you have any recommendations on what we should try next time, let us know in the comments. We'll try anything once, right? Well, I mean to drink. I'm telling you, drink. Absolutely. Absolutely.
Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. God damn, we haven't <laughs> said it until now, dude. Uh, quick thing about Don... like a bell. Yeah. <laughs> He's absolutely... Hey, Don Hudson, if you look at his career stats and what he did year per year, his numbers are insane. Yeah. Like, relative to everyone else, everyone else was catching like 30 passes. This dude was catching 80 for 1,400. So he was like the Jerry Rice of the time. He was, he was double what year... I think he was actually double the second place receiver in yards and receptions. His numbers look like a modern day wide receiver. Just to throw that out there about Don Hudson. As a split end. Yeah. I better, I better and I get drunk. Him. I got a lot of years Future to do myself. Well, right, we're got, 1939. Got to 1939, the fucking piece of shit. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. The Packers <laughs> win uh, again versus the Giants. Jesus, Greatest the Giants are every fucking yeah, the Giants every chapter. They lost game. a lot of them, though. They did. They did. No, they didn't have LT. But anyways, uh, they lost to Green Bay. Or his cocaine. <laughs> the final score was 27-0. to zero. They wow. were shut out in a championship White game. Washing. Which is not cool, man. It was played on December 10th. They played at Milwaukee. Oh, this is fucking terrible. This is so fucking corny. I'm sorry, but I got to say this. It's not because I'm a Lions fan. This is just in general. They called it the Dairy Bowl. Because at halftime, the mayor... And the uh, head coach cracked a fucking bottle of milk at halftime. They cracked it open, like, to celebrate, and they called it the Dairy Bowl, which is fucking ridiculous. I but mean, anyways. Wisconsin, dude. Yeah. Because uh, it's weird. The Packers, I don't know, in my era that I'm doing next after yours, they played in two stadiums. They played at what's today known as Lambeau Field, and they played at another stadium some games. Yeah, maybe like because the, of the... The, the Wisconsin Fairgrounds. They split one with like a baseball team or something like that, right? They, they yeah. would play their home games in two fields, and maybe it had to do with that population thing that we were talking about earlier, that there wasn't that many people, but anyways, that was weird. But, go ahead. Well, Curly Lambeau was the head coach, and the season record was 9-2, and two, losing to the Cleveland Rams and to the Chicago Bears. I already mentioned the thing about halftime. It's corny as fuck. The governor, oh, so it was the, I'm sorry, the governor and the mayor of Milwaukee were at the game, and at halftime, they broke a bottle of milk during the game, naming it the Dairy Bowl, which to me <laughs> sounds like the fucking diarrhea bowl. But, anyways, the Packers were led by Hall of Fame quarterback Arnie Herber, which I already mentioned. Prior years. Also, they had a uh, milk gang to bean, which was an end. Joe Laws, which was a halfback, and Ernie Smith, which is a tackle and place kicker. Uh, the championship game was a rematch from the previous year. Uh, however, this time the Green Bay was on their home turf. The Packers completely dominated the Giants, shutting them out. It was a close game at halftime with the Packers leading only 7-0. to zero. But as soon as the third corner came around, Green Bay poured it on, scoring another 20 points. The Giants' offense was only putting up in total 150 yards of offense and no points, which is fucking terrible. Uh, interesting note. The tickets for the game were on sale at noon Monday, six days before the game, and were nearly sold out in the first 24 hours. Not much is, to do in uh, Green Bay, no. I might add. And that's so different from today. I'm a Dolphin uh, season ticket holder. I cannot even buy a ticket right now if I wanted to, even though the game is being held here. The only way I can buy one is through some package where they throw in like a limo ride and um, they should be throwing in a blowjob and cocaine is what they should be throwing in. But they, they're like it's like a little package. It's five grand if I want to do that little package. Wow. Otherwise, they put me in a... It's a lot of money for a little package. Yeah. That's what they said. Um, they put me in a drawing where like... Then I'd get a chance to buy them at retail cost, which I think is like a grand or something like that. Wow. Anyways, way different from what it was back here in 1939 or 40? 39. 39. The face value of tickets uh, ranged from a dollar ten to $4.40. That was like the, the high rollers 
That's a lot the of money. Big ballers yeah. would spend four dollars and four. Was a soda like five cents back then or something? Well, probably like ten. You're looking at like twenty dollar ticket in modern day prices with a dollar ten. There was thirty two thousand in attendance, and it was a new record set with the gross gate receipts at eighty three thousand five hundred and ten dollars. Uh, people, or no dollar money, uh, money, money collected. collected. People game. coming in per game. Well, in the championship game. Oh, that's right. right. The Dairy Bowl. That's at the Polo Grounds? No, this was in fucking piece of shit Wisconsin. Oh, in L- Lambeau. In Milwaukee. No, Lambeau's 56. Not even Lambeau. It's but, whatever it is. But it was previously named something else. Yeah, they, I think they shared a It's the same of, facility yeah. though, right? Well, in the, the previous, in the previous one, they played at, uh, I think it was called Wisconsin Fairgrounds. Mm-hmm. That's this pretty is much probably they, they played this one at what is today known uh, Lambeau City Field. Stadium. City like Stadium. City Stadium. City Stadium was Lambeau. Is Lambeau City Field? City Stadium, Wisconsin State Fair Park. I don't want to misspeak. We're journalists here. Let me look that up. But I think City Stadium became. Twelve my glasses. Like it's like playing a, a game in the Miami. Uh, well, let me move fair. on while you look that. Yeah, 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 go ahead. 